Well, it's that time of year again. The 25th Midsummer Festival is upon us. There are literally over 100 queer relevant events that you can participate in. You can check out the list at Midsummer's website. Some of the writers from one of Hares and Hyenas events came to visit us at the studio. This is one of them. We're on Bent TV. I'm Sammy Whitehead. I'm joined by performer and writer Jess. Welcome to Bent. Thanks for having me. Tell me a little bit about your work, Dal. So I'm doing a book called To the Exclusion of All Others. It's a, a book that's a queer critique of gay marriage and I have people that have submitted from all around Australia. Fantastic. Are we going to have a bit of a listen to some of that today? Yeah, definitely. Let's do it. As I sit here talking on stolen land, people in detention centres being processed offshore are on hunger strikes. A government that locks people away indefinitely for being refugees is not one I wish to be recognised by. With so much shit happening here and all over the world, I wonder, why gay marriage and why now? Could it be that it is a distraction from the real issues? Whilst resources and energy are poured into fighting for marriage, the Northern Territory intervention is being expanded. We continue to indulge in our mass consumption that is ruining the earth and killing billions of animals and, and weapons taking are, are taking precedence over school books. Sure, we don't want to create a hierarchy of oppressions, but really, why give a fuck about marriage? We're told that the major fight right now in the GLBTQI community, community is gay marriage. Oh, sorry, marriage equality. We don't want the word gay in the title. That's too gay. It needs to be more homonormative, you know? When I came out, I was so happy and free. I also realised that I didn't have to do any of that heteronormative crap. No white picket fence, no flat screen, no marriage. Rather, I saw a queer future that I could shape for myself, not one that was dictated to me. When I came out, I was amped up on a mix of riot girl, hot lesbian and queer sex and a lot of reading. Radical queer authors changed my life. I wanted to find that radical potential of the queer world. Marriage isn't that and never will be. The marriage campaign has stepped in and created what is meant to be the ideal gay and lesbian life. It does so through pinning up white, able-bodied, cisgendered gays and lesbians. They are rich, respectable and always so smiley. There is no discussion of major issues that occur in relationships. One of the biggest preventable threats to women's lives in Victoria is domestic violence. Where is the work marriage equality is doing to end this violence? How can, how can you campaign for something without ever looking at the flaws in your arguments? For a movement that champions blissful relationships, it is obviously, it is obviously quiet about relationships that turn bad. Perhaps I would feel more comfortable if this campaign was holistic, if alongside wedding they had weddings they had plans for refuge refuges that housed queers, amongst many other people in need. Where is the talk of how to have a healthy relationship? Where is the talk of consent and communication? Where are you marriage equality when you have a ring on your finger and a community still being beaten on your doorstep? Can you let us know? What about the issues that affect people who aren't just gay? What if you're poor, a person of colour, trans, have a disability or a woman? After trolling the Marriage Equality website, I felt disconcerted about something. It took me a while to figure it out. They never mention anything past marriage. They don't even mention the honeymoon, let alone how to plan to end homophobia. Aside from its flaws in the actual campaign, it is a single-minded and single-issue fight. Where is their work on the future? If gay marriage was legalised tomorrow, what would be next? They are silent on this. Marriage Equality, what will you do with all your money once you can get married? Will you reveal this to us? Have you even thought of that? No, because it's the only goal. It's the end game. After that, you can comfortably sit back and enjoy life. You've attained marriage. The name for this collection, to the, to the exclusion of all others, came to me as I was standing outside of the Stonewall Inn. I was in New York for an animal activist conference and I decided I just had to see this place, the icon of so much gay liberation. Standing and looking at that shabby old building, of course, made me think back to that, that infamous night of Sylvia Riviera throwing a bottle or a brick or whatever it was at the cops. It made me think of how this is hailed as the moment when so much resistance had actually gone before, that daily folks struggled, but that in our popular imagination we need to pinpoint a moment of greatness that's followed by the state realising the errors of its ways, which of course leads to the laws being changed and oppressed groups being liberated and moments like this are then co-opted by mainstream groups as radical moments on the path to equality. Well, that's how the story often goes. But I can imagine that Sylvia Riviera threw bricks in so many ways, so many times before and after this riot. That change is, continu is a continual battle and that relying on the state to give you rights is so often misguided. There's a bar on Oxford Street in Sydney called Stonewall. 
I wonder how many people dancing to badly mashed up pop music know who Sylvia Riviera is. Gay liberation has become enmeshed in white supremacy, cis-sexism and state-based liberation pleas. The gay rights movement in Australia is fabled to have happened on Oxford Street. It has a similar narrative to that of the Stonewall Inn and the trajectory of the movement is parallel, that is, fighting against state oppression, the state changes laws, and then equality for all. Recently, the committee called the New Mardi Gras changed the name from the Gay and Lesbian Mardi Gras to the Sydney Mardi Gras. This was to be more inclusive. They actually want us to believe that this was a step towards inclusivity, just like the name Marriage Equality, that the Gay and Lesbian has been removed from the title in what is the most obvious example of mainstreaming the movement. Transgender, intersex, bisexuals, they don't even get a mention in the first place. This normalising erases any of the bad gays. We can't have the butchers and drag queens, the trans folks or perverts, the kinksters and saddists, the femmes or polyamorous families, just to name a few. They only detract from the end goal. As Fabian Romero says in their poem for the collection, assimilation is slow assassination. Gay marriage is the pinnacle of this. In putting this collection together, I've often been told that I'm too radical, that lots of gays and lesbians don't want to step outside the box, they just want to be normal. It's a sorry state when the people calling for the end of multiple oppressions are too out there. Much of the critique of m has been infantilising, misogynistic and lesbian phobic. I'm just a young, radical, angry lesbian, annoying feminist. The rea reality is that one day I'll just settle down, be lured by the easiness of middle-class capitalism and just look back condescendingly on my radical 20s. Again, these narratives are trite. But the thing that is missing the most from equal marriage campaigns is queer fucking. Where is the anal in marriage equality? I ask this not only because it's slightly humorous, but because it's so clearly lacking in their campaigns. Australian marriage equality has many films advertising gay marriage, but never once mentions cunnilingus. It's like us queers are a bunch of asexual robots Sure, some queers are most definitely asexual, but many of us love to fuck. Marriage equality is so busy making us like good heterosex heterosexuals that the rest of us are being left out on the doorstep. But to be honest, if the fight is to own flat screen televisions and exclude anyone that doesn't fit the mould, I'll keep fighting outside.